Hey guys, good afternoon and welcome to MF Corner. I'm Pavitra Parekh. With me is Surbhi joining in from the Mumbai studios. And you know, this is a very interesting episode that we have planned for you because as you know, we just got the mutual fund data for the month of August earlier this week and the equity number came in very strong. It was at over 20,000 crore rupees. Now, the thing is that, you know, while large caps continue to lose money, we have seen that massive flow into mid and small caps really continue. It's even picked up further from what we'd seen. There are also several other trends which have emerged this time around while, you know, taking a closer look at the data that we came to uh, really figure whether it's the big jump in hybrid funds, the rise in sector and thematic funds on this entire bunch of NFOs that have hit the street. So, Surbhi, it's a very good time for us to be discussing and having the Amphi team on board considering the non-stop information that we keep getting on the mutual fund industry. <laughs> Absolutely, Pavitra. I'm glad that I've, you know, stepped in today because it's a very interesting time to talk to the uh, asset management industry body because the stock market has been scaling new peaks, right? Investors are cheering the Nifty at 20,000. And the Indian asset management industry also seems to be thriving in full bloom in this scenario. Remember, we've had over uh, at least half a dozen financial entities, including the likes of Zerodha, Bajaj Finance, and Samir Arora's Helios Capital. They've either set up shop or are in the process of setting up their asset management businesses. So there's lots going on in the mutual fund world. And let's not forget, there's BlackRock coming to India in a tie-up with geofinancial services. So there's just enough to talk about. Uh, starting first, of course, with that data itself that, as Pavitra described, look very, very solid. 20,000 crores of inflow in equity funds and mid caps and small caps continuing to pull in the money. So let's take the conversation forward. We have uh, Amphi Chairman A. Bala Subramaniam as well as uh, Amphi Chief Executive N.S. Venkatesh with us on the show. Gentlemen, uh, it's a pleasure to have you on. Good afternoon and thank you for joining in. First things first, Bala, I'll, I'll start with you. 20,000 at the index level, money coming into equity funds in a big, big way. Your first thoughts. Bala, I think uh, you're on mute. You'll have to unmute yourself. Yeah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Uh, no, thanks, Ruby, for having me part of the show today. Uh, definitely the happy moment for the Indian mutual industry, where the industry has been uh, growing uh, leaps and bounds. And conference of industry has also been going up uh, each passing day. And the overall market sentiment definitely actually has been giving uh, uh, the, the, the much needed conference for even investors to actually put their faith on mutual fund. I think that's where the equity participation is coming. In fact, I must also mention that the experience for the investors investing in mutual fund during the earlier volatile period, last these years, have been uh, very, very uh, decent. I would probably suggest, I would probably assume that uh, the current flow of uh, money to the equities it is nothing but endorsement as a product which is relevant for the investors to put their long-term savings into the mutual industry. Okay, so Bala, do you see this continuing at this kind of level, over 20,000 for the coming months as well? Because right now what we're seeing is a lot of money in this mid and small cap space, right? I mean, if, if that part of the market cools, do you think that the flows might not sustain? I think flows will sustain for one simple reason, that people have realized over a period of time how the mutual fund vehicles have to be used for long-term saving, which is nothing but an SAP as an asset class. I think, therefore, a lot of money is coming through the SAPs, a lot of money is coming through the STP, and there are uh, many uh, uh, features that have been created within the SAP itself, which, uh, which takes into account market valuations, which takes into account the retirement planning can be done through the mutual funds. Therefore, the flows have been largely coming through the various routes in which it is coming. Therefore, my assumption would be that the flows would uh, continue. And second is, uh, uh, I think even today, if you look at it, number of people have actually not invested in either equity or the mutual fund will still be lower compared to what it was in the past. Therefore, newer, newer investors, the participation also will come on the other side. See, as long as the experience of investors, uh, despite all the volatility being the, what we have seen, I think as long as it continues, which my belief is as it will continue, and given the fact that all of us are actually putting the the economy goes for next year, as India's year for the next 10 years. And that the conference when it's being built at the top, top macro level, the naturally the investors' uh, confidence in mutual fund industry also will continue to remain high. Therefore, the flows, I think, have to continue. Of course, can always see uh, uh, the, some bit of redemptions coming in the volatile turns. Uh, it sets in. But that, I think, is a part and parcel of the game. Mm, okay. Uh, got that. Let me bring in uh, Mr. Venkatesh into the conversa uh, conversation as well. Uh, Mr. Venkatesh, 
you know, what's your perspective? Because this is a trend that has been ongoing for the last couple of months. The fact that large cap funds have been seeing outflows, outflows reduced in, in the month gone by, but still net outflows. And it's really mid caps and small caps. I mean, these two categories put together, I think, pulled in about 6,700 crores in, uh, in the previous month, uh, much higher than 5,700 crores, which was, I think, the, the figure for July. So what do you make of this trend? And at an industry level, is it becoming a bit of a problem in terms of so much of money coming in mid caps? So the question is, where do you put it? How do you deploy it? Thanks for having me in this conversation, Surbhi. Uh, essentially, I would say that uh, the uh, mid cap and small cap had corrected a lot during the correction phase. And this is the right time for them, investors, to see that there is value in investing into the mid cap and small cap. Uh, so instead of they choosing uh, individual stocks, they have come in and said that let me let me put it through the mutual fund route that is the mid cap funds and the large uh, small cap funds and allowed the fund managers to uh, choose the right stocks for them within the within the pool that they are investing and i think even within currently even within the euphoria that you have seen uh, except for the last two days the euphoria that you have seen in the mid cap and small cap there is still space in some of the stocks where investment could happen that they have left it to the fund managers to do that so i am quite confident that the uh, investors will continue to come through the mutual fund route for the mid cap and small cap going ahead Okay, got that. Uh, Mr. Venkatesh, thanks for joining us. You know, my next question is that we've seen a large chunk of the money coming into mutual funds because of these NFOs that have been launched. I mean, every, every week you see a whole bunch of NFOs and a lot of them are specifically in the sector, thematic fund kind of space. I'm guessing because a lot of the other categories, uh, the limit has already been hit, right? I mean, if a mutual fund house already has that, they can perhaps only look at these newer avenues. Do you think a large chunk of the money in the mutual fund industry will have to continue to come in through these uh, these pockets, like these new NFOs that have been launched? The NFOs are uh, sort of a, uh, schemes which are getting launched based on the market demand that the manufacturer assesses it. So I am quite sure that going ahead also NFOs will be there. But if you look at the 20,000 crore net investment that had come in the last month, uh, you'll see that the NFOs had garnered somewhere around 5,000 crore in pure equity and around 2,000 crore in the hybrid scheme. So balance, again, 13,000 crore is coming out of the normal flows into the mutual fund schemes other than the NFOs. So it will be a combination of NFOs plus the normal flows which will happen. The NFOs will continue to remain uh, sort of a uh, avenue for the uh, manufacturer to uh, uh, showcase his various products to the uh, needs of the uh, mutual fund investors. So I am co confident that it will be a combination of NFOs money coming in plus the uh, normal flows which, which you will see through the SIP route and uh, STP routes coming in. Mm, okay. Uh, Bala, if I could bring you in on that point, uh, as Mr. Venkatesh is saying that we, we should expect more uh, new fund offers to come through. Uh, what is your sense in which categories? I mean, a lot of AMCs are kind of uh, filling in their product gaps. But overall, from an investor standpoint, uh, where should we expect more NFOs on passives or will it be on, you know, uh, some other categories? Where will the new product launches happen? I think the way I see it for me is that the existing large players who have already exhausted the, all the options of you know, coming with the new schemes, they will definitely, of course, pursue thematic uh, funds as part of their offerings. Therefore, that offering will be very limited from the uh, well-established uh, uh, fund houses. All the new fund houses who are coming into this space, of course, all of them will come with the, to have a presence in every category. There are almost about 16 or 17 categories in which we can create a presence. One after the other, they will try and actually fill that uh, offering of a product so that we create the establishment in every product offering. At the same time, ETF is something where uh, you see uh, one mapping to the every index that is available, index that is available from large cap to the mid cap, small cap, every index is the, that exists. You will see the ETF offering coming from every mutual fund. At the same time, there will be smart beta ETF, which I think depending upon like NASDAQ ETF or uh, other funds invest in global ETF kind of things that also will come from different fund houses. I think the fact will remain that you will see a mix of uh, flows coming to the NFOs. NFOs, of course, helps in bringing in new customers. 
as the new AMC is coming, it will expand the market, uh, wider the, the reach will happen. At the same time, existing funds who have been having an established track record in terms of SIP flows coming in, and then that will continue on the other side. I think both will coexist. Of course, the rate of momentum, the rate of growth will always be on the NFOs, given the fact that you have a, a, a focused activities to make your NFO successful and get as much as money as possible. There is a specific activity that you do, and that generally have got a greater impact in terms of flows coming in. Hmm. But otherwise, it will be a mix of both. Okay, so mix of both active and passive. Expect action from... Uh, mutual fund houses on both sides, so as investors we can look out for that. Bala, didn't get your view on this mid-cap mania, mid-cap rush. You know, the other day, uh, Kotak, uh, you know, on the equity, institutional equity brokerage side, they came out with a report saying it's not mid-caps, it's mad caps now. I don't want to scare anybody, but I'm just, I'm just trying to understand as the mutual fund industry, how do you look at the surge of inflows coming in? And again, the same question, is deployment becoming a problem? What message would you like to give out there to investors who are rushing into small cap and mid cap funds? I think what we have seen is that this, uh, what you mentioned about the mid cap. This is a common uh, assumption we always have a lot of number of years that mid cap families are not there for the element of risk. While I can't argue that uh, that, that uh, the assumption is uh, wrong, but at the same time, one has to look at it from a broader economic perspective. Today, the breadth and the width in the economic uh, activity is rising, whether it is infrastructure spending on various uh, sectors, including railways. There are many companies which have got huge capability in the engineering and uh, automobile space. They all now get to benefit. Therefore, the whole ecosystem actually gets benefited. Therefore, one has to look at the smaller mid-cap space in their angle. Therefore, Plus, second is the rate of growth. I think if you look at it from earnings versus rate of growth, also been quite decent. Therefore, if somebody looks at actually smaller mid-cap space, and given the fact that it has huge outperformance uh, over a period of time, one has to look at it as a long-term investing. If somebody comes in a smaller mid-cap space, I'm going to get a short-term gain. It can actually punish them either side, or maybe the fall when it comes, it'll also fall sharply as it goes up. Therefore, one has to look at this investment as a long-term. If somebody builds a portfolio as part of asset allocation, then definitely small and mid-cap something should be considered as a long-term investing rather than short-term investing. I think flows will, depending upon uh, these things, of course, flows has been today more in the small and mid-cap, given the fact that most of the investors in India remain underweight in small and mid-cap. As Venkatesh was mentioning, most of the people try to actually play the small and mid-cap on a direct investing basis, and that is where I think people make a bigger mistake. And for the mutual funds, a diverse portfolio will serve that uh, purpose. As an allocation, definitely makes sense. Okay, got that. We've even moved beyond mid-caps and small-caps. We even have the Motilal micro-cap fund now, right, which is available. And that too, it's an index fund. So uh, this space is definitely very hot. But Bala, Mr. Venkatesh, we have to take a very short break. We have lots more questions. We also want to know what's on your wish list for the industry. So we're going to take a short break, come right back, and then continue our conversation. Hey guys, welcome back. You're still tuned into Mutual Fund Corner here on CNBC TV 18 and we are in conversation with the top team at Amphi to really understand all of the trends in the mutual fund space that they are picking up. Uh, Mr. Venkatesh, coming to you now once more, uh, take us through what you expect on the hybrid funds because ever since the debt tax fund changes were really announced, there's been a huge pickup. You know, even last month we had a very solid figure. It was at around 12,400 crores and then this month for August you got it at over 17,000 crores as well. Where do you think uh, you expect this figure to really get to now, considering that this is the most uh, more tax efficient place compared to just the regular debt funds? Yeah, I do agree with you, Pavitra, that the, this is a more tax efficient uh, sort of a vehicle compared to the debt, debt funds. So the HNIs and those sort of investors we are, have taken a fancy for coming into the uh, hybrid funds. Uh, as well as the arbitrage funds where they believe that they could uh, get a flavor of the equity as well as uh, ensure that uh, they get a little bit of flavor of the debt, but without paying for the tax for the debt on that. So uh, we, will, we will continue to see inflows coming into this. Uh, on the arbitrage, definitely we will have to see how the uh, futures and the spot market uh, sort of moves. But otherwise, I would say that uh, essentially we will continue to see money flowing in into the hybrid, hybrid, and a little bit into the arbitrage funds. Hmm. Okay, got that. We're running out of time, but uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Venkatesh, I just want to come to you once more. 
you know, considering that there are so many changes happening in the mutual fund industry, there's a bunch of new regulations that have come through as well. What would you consider right now your top three in terms of just the wish list for the industry that you think will really help boost this space? I would, I would say that essentially a single KYC across the entire financial landscape, which will ensure that uh, what we saw in the Jandan movement in the banking industry could get replicated into the mutual fund space. Uh, so that is one thing which, uh, which can happen. The, the second thing uh, could be a level playing field as far as the taxation is concerned between various instruments floating around in the market, be it the insurance, be it the pension and be it the mutual fund and equities, equity and debt schemes. And the third one I would say is a wish list in the sense that if the insurance uh, assets which are being managed by the insurance companies could be uh, transferred to the uh, asset management companies to manufacture because or manage that for the simple reason because they have a track record of more than uh, 30 years to manage sure, this. Sure, sure. And they have shown uh, wonderful uh, results. Okay, got that. So that's what's on the wish list. But uh, Bala, before we wrap, I have to ask you about the contentious burning issues, right? And I think the one that comes top of mind to me is this entire Finfluencer debate. Uh, we're talking at an interesting time. Today is the penultimate day. Tomorrow is the last day to submit stakeholder consultations on the, the paper that SEBI released, where SEBI essentially said that, look, regulated entities, which includes mutual funds, they cannot associate with unregistered uh, Finfluencers. Your thoughts on the way forward, because we've been speaking to the, you know, the Finfluencer community as well. They're saying registration is too onerous, etc. And we know that a lot of mutual fund houses have you know, become very active on social media. So what is the way forward on the Finfluencer debate? I think clearly this discussion has been going for quite some time, uh, Surabhi, given the fact that uh, the digital and other medium has, has been playing a bigger role in influencing customers in a variety of ways there. Some are, of course, uh, genuine in terms of uh, making the right influence. There could be some which could be a misleading in nature and so on and so forth. Given the fact that the participation, not just only in mutual fund, even the uh, equity market in general have been uh, going up. Uh, and as the market became larger and larger as we move towards the vital economy, definitely bringing in some bit of a regulatory framework under which all of them should operate is actually the right uh, move. And given the fact that uh, as the system becomes larger and become wider reach, it happens. The definitely uh, that point of time regulatory framework coming in may not really actually do the much needed uh, impact that it should have. The point I think in my view is quite, we can probably say it's too early, but I think earlier is better than uh, coming late and that's what I think SEBI is uh, doing. And since the Indian mutual industry, all of us have gone through that kind of uh, journey all these years, uh, definitely is bringing more uh, people under that regulatory framework is definitely is something in the right direction. Of course, uh, as government has been always saying, all these things have to happen in a, in a click of a button, ease of uh, doing business has to be competitive. Therefore, I would also assume, given the fact that technology can enable yeah, small, the ease of uh, onboarding such people under the regulatory framework, I think probably I would, I would assume it will be part of the whole system. So, so Bala, that, that's exactly what I wanted to ask, that uh, while you agree that we need a regulatory framework for this, uh, is the existing framework enough? Because I think this entire social media of influencer community, their pushback is that current RIA guidelines are simply too onerous and complicated. Uh, you know, would, would you kind of see some merit in that argument? And therefore, uh, what kind of a framework do we need? If uh, the existing is either you become a research analyst or you become an RIA, uh, and the community is saying that that's too difficult. I think one good thing which I've seen over a period of time is uh, the way regulatory framework is always formed is the listen to the market in terms of feedback that comes in and basis which whatever course correction needs to be done is done. I think one, first and foremost is whether you should come to the regulatory framework or not, that I think that more or less fixes to come to the regulatory framework. And within that operating model, uh, as long as one is able to actually make things work in a manner that uh, it can actually be made much more easy and uh, possible, that's something. I would assume that even regulatory framework will look at a more objectively to ensure that um, uh, it doesn't have much of complication. At the same time, they come as a regulatory framework. That's why I've seen it. I have seen it in the mutual industry that they have taken a feedback from all of us on basis which I think they bring in a newness and everything that they do. I would assume a similar process will be undertaken for uh, this platform also. Also, Balan, we are, we are out of time. So 30 seconds on this. Uh, the TER matter, uh, the you know the next consultation paper that we are all awaiting. What is the stance on this? What is the last that you've heard from the regulator on uh, TERs? 
uh, nothing incremental update I can give uh, sort of given the fact that uh, they have been having a multiple lot of discussions and conversation with the mutual fund players and taking more and more uh, data given the fact that the SEBI takes all the decisions on the basis of the data that is being submitted with the industry and practices. I would assume it will take some more time, but the fact of the matter is it's gone through already three, four rounds of discussions. It is only the question of uh, when, when it could come. But otherwise, uh, right now, I, uh, there's absolutely no increment update that I have. Okay. All right, uh, gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us on uh, that whole range of issues, starting with, of course, the monthly data and, of course, the way forward for the industry and some of these regulatory aspects as well. Thank you very much for joining in. From uh, Pavitra, me and the entire team that puts this show together, it's a wrap on this edition of Mutual Fund Corner. Stay tuned. All the action will continue. Up next is Closing Bell.